Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 8 of the simple series of my assembly tutorials. Now this time we're going to be looking at the TIE 83, the rather obscure little calculator that's you know, quite a lot of fun to work with. And we're going to be looking at how to create simple sprites on that. So if you're one of these crazy people who wants to use your calculator for playing games, you know, well that's... Um, that's certainly a good thing to do. So that's what we're going to learn about how to do the basics of today. So let's take a look at the example and see how we can make our calculator actually do some graphics. Now, and every time we do this kind of example, we have two versions. The first one is a very simple example, and we're going to look at that now. And it's just a simple 8x8 smiley face that we'll see on the screen. And here it is. There's the little smiley there. Now, if you don't know how to create an executable program, so please see the Hello World series where we looked at that in detail. We're going to skip over that today. We're just going to look at the actual fundamentals of the graphical work we saw today. So first of all, we've got our header for our cartridge here. And we're defining two symbols here, one for the communications port and one for the data port of the LCD driver. And that's going to be quite important today because we need to be doing that to use our graphics. We're turning off interrupts here and we're running a, something called a B call and we're telling the operating system not to show the pause icon in the corner of the screen. Otherwise, there's this constant icon when the CPU is busy and that's not really what we're going to want in our game. So we're turning that off with the operating system there. And then we're waiting for the LCD to be ready. Now, we're going to see this command a lot. LCD busy quick, as, as it's called, is a wait to wait for the LCD to finish whatever it's doing. So at this point, we know we're ready. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set some initialization attributes for the LCD hardware to set, set it up to work the way we want. And we're going to use send byte, which is a combination of some commands here. The first one is writing to the command port here, and what it, that's whatever's in the accumulator. And then it's going to run LCD busy quick, and you'll see this is a jump. And that means that we will actually return back as soon as that has finished. So now there's a typo here. There should be bits. Now, the first thing we're doing here is we're telling the system that the characters are 8 bits wide. And this would sound very logical because it's a black and white system, so one bit per pixel. But the system actually has a shrunken mode, which is where there's all everything's narrower to get more on the screen. And it would actually start, start squashing things. So we, we need to set it to its default of the full width there. Then we're setting auto ink. And we're setting auto ink of the attribute that it refers to as the y-axis. But the y-axis within the um, hardware documentation is actually horizontally across the screen and the x-axis is vertically. That's not the terminology that, to my knowledge, anyone else in the whole world in the history of time ever has ever used. Usually speaking, y goes up or down the screen and x goes across the screen. So, boy, did that catch me out when I was trying to get it working. But anyway, um, generally in my documentation, we are going to retain the more logical X is across and Y is down. But if you're reading the official documentation, please understand that you will see it the other way around. So um, just, just understand that. Um, okay, so this is just our initialization to get the graphics hardware set up, right? And then we're going to use a function called get screen pause. And we're going to select an XY position here. This is five across the screen and five down the screen. You'll notice I've called it horizontal and vertical rather than X and Y just to try and clear things up. So here's this get screen pods function here. Now we have to send everything to the LCD command port and depending on what the top nibble is or what the top couple of bits are rather, we'll define what the remaining bits are actually doing. So we set the top nibble to eight and then we add the Y position here and that will set the Y position of the next right to the screen. And then we do the same, setting the top nibble to two, adding the X position. And each time we're running send byte, which you can see is just this combination of writing something to the command port via an out command and LCD busy quick by jumping to triple zero B here. So that will select the screen pods for writing. And then when we want to write, all we do is we write to LCD data, the second port. We still have to call LCD busy quick every single time if we don't the LCD won't keep up and it won't work. So that's what we have to do with all of our writes. Now, and I know what you're thinking, oh, all of this waiting around is going to slow things down. Well, technically speaking, but the um, the CPU in the um, in the tie is pretty fast. You know, it's not a bad CPU. And so the, the, the tiny, tiny screen means that when you compare it to something like an Amstrad CPC with its huge screen, all of this waiting around is still going to make it faster. It, it's going to be... Um, it's going to be very unlikely your game is going to be too slow unless you're literally writing Doom for the tie, which some crazy person has effectively done. There is a sort of tie Doom out there. Anyway, so what we're doing, we're reading from HL, 
we're writing to the data port, repeating until we've done all eight lines. Now, in this case, we're just writing one byte for each line because our smiley face is just one byte. Now you can see the test data here. And you can see that the ones here make a circle, the zeros here make a smile and two eyes. So that's our smiley face there. So that's how we do this example. It's all pretty straightforward, really. Now we do have this second example, but again, it's wrong there. That should be eight bits per character. And again, we're just initializing things here. This time we're setting the height to 48. And this time we've got a second loop here using C, which is the width. The width is six bytes. So eight times six, 48 again. So we're using a 48 by 48 character. And you can see I've actually exported it as binary in this rare case. But if we go to Acusprite Editor here, and if we load up our bitmap test here, if you go here to Z80 tie 83 file save raw bitmap, that will output the data in the correct format today. Is it for today's example? I've just actually imported it as a binary file. I've just actually converted it to code and put it in as binary here. It's exactly the same format as the ZX Spectrum, incidentally, because it's just black and white. So if we run this version here, if we just hit enter, you can see our Chibico is there, although it's actually inverted. I mean, I suppose we could be quite clever and we could fix that. So we're reading in each byte from HL. We're writing it to the data port. So if we just do a CPL here and run again, our Chibico is kind of the right color now. So there we go. Anyway, you can see there that, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward to get graphics to the screen. And as I say, despite how it would look slow with the LCD BusyQuick, Grime Z80 was very, very fast on the uh, tie. So it's not likely to be a problem for you because of the screen size limitations, the lack of data space within the screen memory. So there we go. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I've got lots of other tutorials on the TIE 83 if, if it's a system that does interest you. We're going to be coming back to it later and we're going to learn how to read from the keyboard so we can move an object around the screen. So if you're looking to create a little game on your TIE calculator, then you know, that's, that's something you should stick around for. So please like and subscribe. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching today and goodbye. If you enjoyed today's video, please check out my new YouTube channel known as Chibi Akamas Live. This is going to be a live streaming channel and it's going to be um, some more casual content. It will be me streaming some of my programming sessions, me playing games and chatting along. Um, I'm going to try and really do a lot of technical content in there, try and explain things as I'm playing games, you know, talking about the hardware or while I'm programming. And also I'm going to try and interact with the chat a lot. So if you really enjoyed today's lesson, then maybe you want more content and that will give it you. Equally, if you didn't enjoy today's lesson, if it was too hard for you, if you found it um, confusing and you want something a bit lighter hearted, then it might be interesting to you as well. Though I guess you've probably already clicked off if you didn't enjoy it because 95% of my viewers give up after about two minutes. But either way, thanks for watching and goodbye.